from a defabricated garden shed in Rockland County, New York, USA. This is Stand Up with Pete Dominic. On today's episode, how to properly celebrate finally getting rid of that stubborn foot core. Ew. And now, the podcast host who has no worries for such things because he has the feet of a 12-year-old, <laughs> Pete Dominic. It is true. I have childlike feet, and that is something that any close listener, longtime listener would know. So kudos to you, Pete Co. and happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Stand Up. I've got two excellent guests joining me today. Bill B in D.C., that's Bill Boyle, who's got a freshly broken nose. <laughs> I'm falling off a scooter. I don't know why I'm laughing, but it's a pretty crazy story that he shared. And, of course, Mara Quint for Mara Mondays. Got a great week of guests planned for you. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you saw that I dropped a bonus episode yesterday, a new edition, a new chapter episode of my conversation with The Hue, the ladies from The Hue, Karen, Kimberly, Francis, and Vicky. Really good. Got a lot of great feedback. People were happy to have that in their queue to listen to on a Sunday. If you haven't listened to it, I thought it was great. I really liked it. So check that out. Hope you had a great weekend. Did you watch that soccer game, the World Cup final between Argentina and France? Some people are saying it's the greatest World Cup final ever to be played. Argentina winning in the end and penalty kicks. For those of you who say soccer is boring, woo, you missed this game. So the World Cup is officially over, and now it's time to get back to, what, the end of the month? What really happens here at the end of December? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll be posting episodes of Stand Up each and every day. I'll be here with you as expected. So thank you very much for listening and supporting the show. If you haven't signed up for a paid subscription, hey, now would be a great time to do it. Go to StandUpWithPete.com right now. All right, just a couple things before I get to my guests. Last night, late on Sunday, Elon Musk uh, put up a poll well about six o'clock on Sunday East. He said, should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. And as of about 845 p.m. Sunday, 57 percent to 42 percent, 57 percent say yes to 42 percent. Then there are about nine hours left. And again, that's at about 9 p.m. East. So. Hmm. We'll see. Major backlash against Elon Musk. He's staking his leadership on a Twitter poll. Investors at Tesla are really, really concerned as their stock has been halved. I talk with both my guests about Elon Musk's latest shenanigans, but he certainly is keeping it interesting with this new poll. Not sure what that means if he would uh, would be stepping down. So. I guess we're about to find out. All right. Well, also big news on Capitol Hill, where the January 6th committee will meet for their final hearing at 1 p.m. today. I'll be paying close attention to that. Here's Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Of course, he is on the committee. And here's what he had to say to Jake Tapper, the tap man on State of the Union yesterday, where he's saying there's evidence Donald Trump committed criminal offenses in his effort to overturn the 2020 election. He tried to interfere with the joint session. He pressed officials to find votes that didn't exist, set a bloodthirsty mob on the Capitol. If it's not criminal, nothing is. Here he is. I think that the evidence is there that Donald Trump committed uh, criminal offenses in connection with his efforts to overturn the election um, and viewing it uh, as a former prosecutor. Um, I think there's sufficient evidence to to charge the president to get a I conviction now. Well, I don't know what the Justice Department has. I do know what's in the public record. Uh, the evidence seems pretty plain to me, uh, but I would want to see the full body of evidence uh, if I were in the prosecutor's shoes to make a decision. But, uh, uh, you know, this is someone who. Uh, in multiple ways, uh, tried to pressure state officials to find votes that didn't exist. Uh, This is someone who uh, tried to interfere with a joint session, uh, even inciting a mob to attack the Capitol. Um, If that's not criminal, then uh, then I don't know what is. All right. There you go. More on that today at one o'clock. I'm sure you'll be watching or paying attention to the details. Now let's move on to the economy. I liked this report yesterday on CBS's Face the Nation. This is Mark Strassman reporting 
for almost two minutes on the economy here at the end of the year. So I thought I'd share this CBS News reporting. Tis the season to be jittery with an economy offering both the spirit of Santa and the specter of Scrooge. Here's a gift. Inflation is coming down in America. Down for the fifth straight month from its June peak. Gas prices dropped more than 50 cents over the last month, averaging 3.15 a gallon. A steal compared to mid-June, when typical gas prices began with a number five. Inflation's easing, but it's become a siege. Still above 7%, still near a 40-year high. The U.S. economy has slowed significantly from last year's rapid pace. No surprise, the Fed this week raised interest rates again, this time by half a percentage point. Without price stability, the economy doesn't work for anyone. The Fed's seventh rate hike this year stokes another worry. It's clear that the Fed is not done. They're going to continue to raise interest rates. More likely than not, push us into recession. Recession pessimism fuels the Scrooge in this holiday economy along with a bear stock market, a housing slump, a drop in manufacturing output. November's retail sales were the biggest decline this year. Worrisome to retailers, shoppers spent less in holiday categories, electronics, clothing, toys. I am definitely doing couponing, um, Amazon deals, um, shopping local, and then obviously like making my own stuff. The holiday shopping season is the time of year when retailers need consumers to feel jolly. But for millions of shoppers, this year's goal, find gifts that fit under the tree and into their budget. All right, I just thought that was an interesting report that I grabbed from CBS News's Mark Strassman. But now let's go to Jamie Gangel, who was doing this segment on CNN you might have seen it over the weekend. She was in a restaurant with Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi sitting there talking about just everything, all they'd, I guess, accomplished together. It was kind of like an exit interview, I guess, maybe for the Speaker of the House, just talking to CNN's Jamie Gangal. And the whole thing is really worth watching, but I'll just include this last minute or so. You've been through the first presidency. You've been through January 6th. What would it mean if Donald Trump was reelected president? I don't think it'll happen. The American people have gotten wise to him. It took a little while, but they did. I don't think that we should talk about him while we're eating. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, my God. What kind of maniacal laugh is that, Chuck Schumer? <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, speaking of laughter, let's head over to Saturday Night Live, where they were live on Saturday. How about that? And here's weekend updates. Colin Jost. Insiders are saying that the House January 6th committee will refer at least three criminal charges against Donald Trump. But after this week, I I think he's pretty much locked down that insanity plea. (laughs) Semi-retired maniac Donald Trump has launched... A collection of digital NFT trading cards depicting him in various costumes, including cowboy, superhero, and most unbelievable of all, guy who didn't dodge the draft. (laughs) I'm honestly just relieved that he's wearing an American military uniform. (laughs) It's such a funny move to get into NFTs after the whole market just crashed. (laughs) It's like getting into Kanye now. Which Trump also kind of did. All right. And finally, they are having the Turning Point USA, which is the the Charlie Kirk, this guy. He's a very influential, young conservative. And and he they had their big America Fest in, in Phoenix. And it's taken place from Saturday to Tuesday. And all the stars are there. Carrie Lake, Tucker Carlson. Donald Trump Jr. and Senator Josh Hawley, who has written a very important book on masculinity, was there to talk to young men to, well, take a listen. To young men, let me make a suggestion to you. Why don't you turn off the computer and log off the porn and go ask a real woman on a date? How about that? Just a thought. Ask her out. Young men, why don't you be the ones who do the asking? How about that? Don't wait for her. You go ask. Show her a little respect. And then you take her out and you treat her right. How about that? Don't make her cater to your whims. Treat her right. 
Treat her right. Treat her like she, what she is, a woman. A person of incredible significance created in the image of God. And you know what? You treat her right, and then one day you do her the uh, honor and show her the respect uh, of asking her to marry you. And then you go get married. And you have children. What? What is he talking about? I guess he's just given young men advice on how to ask, that he should ask, what just happened? Who needed to hear that? How was that? <laughs> what if a woman asks you out? Should you say, no, no, I do the asking around here. Will you go with me? No, not anymore, jack off. All right, well, better close down that opportunity. And how about you head back to the porn? Great. Take advice from Josh Hawley on just about anything other than running away from danger. All right. Well, that's all I've got for you here at the top. Uh, let's get to my first guest, shall we? Coming up, it's Mara Mondays. Mara Quint, another great conversation with Mara. She's now on TikTok. We had a fun talk about that and Elon Musk and so much more. She's headed down to Australia for like 10 days. She's leaving on, I think, Christmas Eve. So it was fun conversation, as always, with Mara. But by, I caught up with Bill Boyle of the weekend, Bill B in D.C. We always love when he joins us. So much to talk with him about, including the fact that he smashed his face into the pavement when he was riding around on a scooter in Washington, D.C. and went over a bump and uh, went to the emergency room. Apparently, it's pretty bad. Uh, I'll put out pictures and video that he wants me to share. Anyway, Bill's always great to talk with, and we caught up over the weekend about it all. I think you're really going to like it, as always. Follow him on Twitter while that's still a thing. He's also on Mastodon and post Bill B in D.C. right now on Stand Up With Me. There he is, everybody. You can see him performing his one-man show, Nobody Hates Elon Musk Longer and More Than Me. It's the Bill Boyle. <laughs> Good to see you, man. you, you got to give me credit for having hated the right people for a real long no, time, you right? No, you've done, you've done well. You've had a pretty good record. <laughs> you've had a pretty good record, no doubt about it. Yeah. Good credibility on calling out the, uh, the assholes and the cranks. Before we get to Elon, though, what are your thoughts on... Donald Trump's future. He has now selling late night swag, a digital in the form of a digital card, uh, NFT. He sold them all. Apparently, made four, five million dollars, almost four and a half million dollars in a day, if you believe it. And apparently, I guess there's some actual data on it. But what, what are your, what is all that about? And is he in fact done? No, he's not done at all. I mean, what that tell? And by the way, we don't really know who bought them, right? These ridiculous NFTs. Um, it could have been basically people laundering money to him very easily, right? Um, that being said, also, the idea that this somehow finishes him, like, oh, my God, this is so pathetic. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, I believe that. Go ahead. I don't think that's true. Go ahead. I don't ahead. think that's true at all. I think if you look at his head-to-heads against DeSantis, some of them show him up a, a bunch. Some of them show down a bunch. Some of them are all over the place. Um but this is 18 months before that election even kicks off in any serious way. It's a lifetime away from the next election. And and the bottom line, though, is that you don't see a really consistent collapse in his numbers. You still see that he is pretty popular with 40 percent, 50 percent of Republicans. That's it. Now, when have you seen that recently? Is, when have you seen that? Have you seen a poll recently that said that I've seen at least polls of, of, of like other people crushing him in head to heads? Only DeSantis and and Biden. And Biden. Well, yeah, but, but 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 DeSantis. Some polls say yes. Some polls say no. Honestly, for an intra-party poll this early in the cycle, it's way too early. It's way too early. And the bottom line is that you know Trump still holds the allegiance, holds the favorability ratings of probably about about a half of Republicans, right? And and I just saw something today. Something like seventy percent want him to run again, or fifty-seven percent, excuse me, want him to run again. He still holds a lot of power on the base of that party, the MAGA, lunatic, and deplorables. And and I think one of the things that people don't talk about very much is that he's not going to be running against just DeSantis. He's going to be running against Pence, DeSantis, uh, you know, whoever. Everybody. Pompeo? Why do we leave people. Pompeo Pompeo. Up? Well, yeah, the, the one percenter. Um, uh, what about, he, uh, what's his name? Uh, Tim Scott. Is he going to run? No, he's not going to run. Tim Tim Scott is too smart to run, actually, because <laughs> yeah. he's going to wait. 
He's going to wait till Trump is off the radar screen. And by the way, Kanye, if DeSantis was really smart, he would wait too. The smart move is to wait Trump out because if Trump, you go against Trump in the primaries, he's going to retain 30% of the primary voters. And if you beat him in the primary somehow, he's going to pull those people into a third party bid or in other ways, screw you in the general. And you just, so it's stupid. You wait, you need to wait if you're a Republican until Trump's off the menu. That's it. No, I just don't think I don't think those factors have changed in any significant way yet. Now, Trump is probably going to get indicted. I, I would say it's pretty likely he gets indicted. I think that will have all kinds of billiard ball effects in our politics that we can't really read. But I think if you're DeSantis, you must go to bed at night praying to the baby Jesus. That, that is what happens, because that's your best shot. OK, I mean, I still don't know why he humiliated himself and did that that digital NFT thing, though. I mean, because he's think, a schmaltzy douche and he wants the money. You think somebody was the Sa- some Saudi's like, I'll give you five million bucks. Just put something out. I'll buy it. And yeah, that, that's a 100%. way of laundering. Those things cost, they're, Pete, those were JPEGs. They're literally just digital pictures. They weren't even they didn't even have the bullshit fig leaf that an NFT has. I never thought of that. He was just somebody just paying him off and just being like, because it's a legitimate. He, he if he said, I mean, that's not it's not illegal, is it? Like if I say, listen. Well, I guess, uh, of course it would be, because you want something in return. But right. the point is, he's like, I'll give you these files that I've got. And then yeah, some or, Saudi, some Saudi's like, okay, well, how are we going to do this exchange? And, you know, he's like, I'll put a, I'll set a fork, a special Trump fork, and you buy them all. Exactly. Okay. These guys, I mean, the Saudis that he deals with would be too smart. They're not as dumb as he is. Yeah, I'm just saying. They would be uh, too smart to say it that overtly. Right. But they would say, hey, you know, we would love to. You should put out this thing. Like, they would come to him and say, we would love to have NFTs of you. And then he goes, <laughs> ah, got it. And right. then he goes and does it. And then they all claim, and, you know, it's probably not illegal in any obvious huge way. I shouldn't say that. It's probably not illegal in any um, chargeable way, but we all know what's going on here. Like, it's obvious he's getting a payoff somehow. You think they think that's what this, this uh, mm-hmm. NFT thing I was do. about, though? I do. Yeah, I think that there's going to be you're going to see big buyers, people who bought two million dollars worth, a million dollars worth. You'll see some big buyers in there because they sold that in one day. And, okay. well, and you know, the, the average MAGA person is not the most organized. That's person just in the world. a big guess a, of yours, though. That is a big guess of mine. I'm pretty comfortable with it. <laughs> pretty comfortable. With it. OK, that's interesting. Yeah. You heard it here. All right. So enough about him. And I don't know if there's any other politics that we need to talk about. Lame duck budget. Uh, but I wanted to obviously talk with you about oh, Kevin McCarthy. What you got? I think that Kevin McCarthy, from what I hear, is quite unlikely to get through as Speaker of the House in the first vote on January 3rd. OK, um, the 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 over under that I'm hearing is at least four votes to make it happen, which, by the way, may not happen formally in public, but there'll be a lot of. Horse trading, he will have to sell his soul and everybody else's soul to get the gig if he gets it. And if he doesn't get it, it's going to be the sort of Paul Ryan situation again, where Scalise is forced into it, say, or somebody like Scalise. And at best, whoever wins that spot lasts until the summer. And then the debt limit vote, at minimum, the debt limit vote will break who's ever in the speaker of the house this <laughs> it's an awesome prediction. so it's gonna it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a super crazy yeah and what are they gonna do they're mess. just gonna we're gonna have to hear about investigations for the next two years well so that's gonna be the amazing thing right you're gonna have the debt limit that could crash the economy and these guys are gonna be screaming about hunter biden's wiener right i mean that you couldn't <laughs> if you were joe biden and the democrats you could not concoct a better situation for 2024 you couldn't Wow. You're going to be able to run against the loons again. It's great. Yeah. Run against so, the loons again is funny. Yeah. I mean, it's that's that's weirdly that is an accurate description of what's happening. Yeah. It, it's so. why they lost because they were um, you uh, got to have a uh, quality uh, candidate quality matters. Candidate quality matters. Hey, say what you will about Mitch. He knows what he's doing. Right. Like, yeah, he knows he and he, he is very publicly saying. Hey, you guys burned us last time. We'd have the Senate right now, but you guys screwed us up. Candidate quality. I just love candidate quality. It's like the most polite way of describing. Yeah. 
you, you, what, wait, the, it's the converse of what you're saying. Let us run against the loons. That's who you're talking about. And he's calling them the quality of the candidate. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so l- let me ask you then. Let's get to Elon Musk and all things Musk. The yeah. latest we're talking Friday evening. And the latest is that he obviously suspended a bunch of journalists and he's just picking people who now pick on him and and suspending them. Uh, and a lot. It's, it's moving very fast. All of a sudden, yes. Bill, uh, I mean, we thought maybe, what is it, two weeks ago, there was this one night where, like, it's going down. Everybody was saying goodbye and making, and I still feel like we're on a ship, a sinking ship. It's a good metaphor. But uh, the mm-hmm. last 24 hours, what do, what do you think's going on? Well, I think Elon Musk made the dumbest possible mistake you could ever make in his situation. Right? Buying Twitter? He, well, that, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, since he bought Twitter. Um Elon Musk bought a the 15th most popular social media uh, app in the world. Number 15. Okay. So this is not TikTok. This is not something else that's bigger or whatever. It's not very valuable. Probably worth, I don't know, 20 million. And he paid 44 billion or 20, 20 billion. He paid about 44 billion for it. Then this thing that he's buying, 10% of the users create 80% of the content. And that same 10% of the users are the people who engage the most with other people's content, Mm. right? So 80% of your content, you're getting it for free, right? You're using it to sell advertising and, and you're, and you're um, able to get some sort of pretty good revenue stream out of that. In fact, it was 92% of the revenue from that. So they've got this demographic 10%, mostly women, browner, richer, more educated. They talk about politics all the time, liberal politics, especially. See, this is what you're buying. This is the business you're buying. And I I say all that as a businessman to say, like, when you go to purchase a company, you look at where they make money and you look at where you can, and you've spent money to buy this place. Now you have to figure out where you can add money. Well, instead, what Musk did is he came in, he lost a million users right away, mostly those more engaged people. And say that, Say that there's 19 or 20 million in really super engaged people out of the, the, and the numbers, by the way, are anywhere from 190 to 450 million people who use Twitter. But say that's about 19 million, 19, 20 million. He lost 5% the day he opened the doors, right? If you own a restaurant, you're screwed in that situation. Any other business. This is no different because advertisers started to go, whoa, this guy's coming in here. He's breaking, breaking furniture. He is bull in a china closet. He's doing all these dumb things. And so it wasn't, it wasn't things like in the sense of, okay, I have a vision for this company and I'm going to go and work this vision. It was just like random spleen, right? Like he woke up on a bad, you know, on a bad yeah. side of the bed one morning and decided he's going to freak out about something. And this all culminates in this week where he suddenly decides that if you are able, if you put on his website, his airplane flying around the country, if you put it on his website, that's doxing. His him. website being to, uh, Twitter. Onto Twitter. You put it onto Twitter, that's doxing him. Here's the deal, guys. A transponder on an airplane is fucking public information that is available live at places like Flight Trader 24 and all these other apps. Because guess what? That's why planes don't run into each other in the sky. Right. That's why every plane has a public transponder that anyone can see with the right equipment, because that's how you don't crash into each other. The only planes in the world that don't turn on the transponders are military planes at war. Right. That's why when you look at Ukraine, you don't see any planes on these on any of these websites that show live flying because they don't want to get shot down. Right. Anywhere else, it's public knowledge. There's no doubt about it. Well, he instead claims that this is doxing him. He threatens to sue the twenty-year-old kid that had a had a a handle. Why? That hold on a second. Let around. me just try to. Why isn't it? I think it was Ben Shapiro making the argument that it is. It's one thing to know that there's a plane there. It's another thing to know that that's a specific person's plane and then attach their identity to it and follow it a, a, around. Yeah, he's a clown. Every plane has a particular transponder. I know, but like how do every- I? But in every house has a particular number and every person has a particular phone number. It's like a license number. plate on a car. It's like a license plate on a car. You can look up that transponder I, because it's. But I can't look up your license plate and identify your name. 
you could very well a cars aren't planes planes or planes have bigger outcomes if they go wrong yeah but it's just planes not it's like regulation, it's not, everything it's, else. it's not the it, it's not somebody's right to know whose plane it is just that it is a plane that's what the transponder should be for no i mean you actually you do know that you need to know whose plane it is because you as a country you need to know and it needs to be public knowledge for instance things like i want to know if my husband's or wife's plane is getting home on time from his trip to california hmm. right like there's all these things that matter it's like knowing whether a train what it, what 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 the you know number on a train is? This well, is not if, these what, are not cars. This is different. If people it's mass wanted transit. to, if people wanted to uh, agree with the point that I'm that I'm making, saying that it's doxing, it doesn't. It, the, all it means in this case is apparently he, he has a case of saying that the person who is doing that should be banned. But he banned a bunch of reporters who were just talking well, about the. Oh, it gets even better. He banned them because they were pointing out his Musk's idea on banning this kid and banning anything like it, by the way, including Russian oligarch planes and Russian yachts, right? Like there's all these secondary effects of what he did where all these bad actors in the world are able now to be anonymous when they move around to the general public if you're on Twitter. But he claimed that because they were able to see his plane, that that allowed some stalker to find his kid and bodyguard in a Tesla, nowhere near the airport. Yeah, I didn't. I, I on its I, face, it's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. He confabulated this whole thing because he wanted. He didn't like it. People were following his plane on Twitter. That's it. There, the, the kid, the, the kid that confronted his, he claims his bodyguard and son. That was nowhere near the airport. They're in a white Tesla. You can see it when the guy bodyguard gets out of the car. There's no plane there. They're not on a tarmac. Nothing. It's a private street. So he really made it up out of whole cloth. Mm. Because he, I think, A, he just doesn't like it that people like us can just figure out where he is. I think, B, he wants to show power. He wants to tell the, show these journalists who's boss on Twitter. And I mean, he, for instance, just a couple of hours ago, he banned from Twitter a journalist whose big journalistic stories the last couple of years have been about Elon Musk doxing people. Elon Musk doxes people all the time in the pursuit of his business. And yet he is he is pretending that this is some incredibly crazy thing. And who would ever do this? He does it all the time. Pete. So mm-hmm. this is like real like Russian oligarch kind of shit. Yeah. Behavior. He wants to be able to do it. And he doesn't want you to be able right. to do it. And I'll give you a great example. They are passing around the idea that what Twitter's going to do is unless you pay the eight bucks, you have to give up your location data so that they can sell that to advertisers and to anyone else who wants it. In other words, he's telling you, if you use Twitter, I get your location. But if I'm flying my plane, you can't know where it is. Yeah. It's complete hypocrisy. It's absurd. And by the way, none of this is about any long-term plan, which again goes back to what I was saying about the business. Advertisers are running away. They're like, this guy's a lunatic. He's an idiot. Why would I? And, and another thing that he had out there is this idea that we're going to make, um, we're going to put a banking like Zelly or whatever into Twitter. So uh, you can send money through Twitter an app that allows you to send money through Twitter. They already have right. that. Don't they? They do not right now, but they're oh, planning. On it. I could send it Here's to a user. Deal. I could pay like Mara Quint has that dollar sign up and you, you could send. Oh, it. right, right. You basically, you're following a link though. Yeah. This would be integral inside the app. Right. Got it. Um, would you trust this guy? Who puts out the DMs of people that he has conversations with? I uh, know that's who a good point. Who's going to trust? Yeah. Who's going to trust? Uh, who's going to trust? I mean, yeah, you're talking about being a bank. Banks have to be above and beyond in probity or people don't use them. Right. And, and so it's a really like a, it's a, it's a fascinating thing to watch um, because he is making no sense as a businessman. None. Yeah. I mean, he it's overpaid. He's managing it badly. He's scaring away the, ba- and by the way, what happens when those, that 10% says, fuck it, I'm going to Mastodon. I'm going to post that news. You're going to have, I, I j- put a joke up on Twitter that, Twitter's going to be like a couple million guys like who can't maintain a relationship with a world with a real girl talking about how much they're right. <laughs> right. That's going to be it. Like it's going to be truth social. Oh, actually. I am it'll in. Take, it'll, it'll take time <laughs> to get there by the way, because the base, there's this huge base of people who never use Twitter, but have it. Right. So it, he's going to still be able to say next year, he's got 150 million people. 
But of the actual users, it'll be 5 million people again. Uh, Bill, by the it'll way, is on, is on both Mastodon and Post. As am I now. I figured out Mastodon today. No, I didn't figure it out. I just, I finally got in there. And, and, you and, friended me, which is all that matters. Oh, good. Answer. All right. So. Uh, what about the damage that he's also doing to his other business interests and companies that he either owns or is affiliated with? Yeah. For example, Tesla's stock is over... 50% down over the year or some 67, yeah. so something huge. I guess it's a yeah. really big deal for a company like that. A, and, and then I saw this other, like this, someone pointed this out on Twitter. I don't know how accurate this is, but it's like someone tell Elon Musk who buys his cars. Cause it's certainly a lot of, li- Again, a lot same of thing. liberals do a lot. I mean, I, I don't certainly not exclusively, but, but like, what about Tesla and what about, anything else that he's involved with and it going really being having tremendous damage be, I mean, I don't even know what, uh, could they go under? Sure. They could. I mean, anybody can go under. I mean, he, so he, the big, somebody said, and you'll love this. Somebody said, and you'll love this. Wait till people, everybody finds out how shitty their cars are. And I've only come to know like a lot more of the criticism. I've always heard you, but other people as well. Uh, and and mm-hmm. I've seen, I've read more about it and so on. I used to, as you know, want one really badly, but now I would never buy one now for both these reasons. Apparently, it's not the greatest car in the world, as it's no. uh, as it seems, A, and uh, B, if I don't want to have anything to do with the guy. I used to say, it shouldn't matter, but now, at this point, come on. It's like, you see that, you, you I literally do this in my brain. I see the Tesla logo, and I think of Elon Musk. You might as well write the Musk on that car, because that's what I see. That's right. So Musk, and this, this is, I'm going to get back to Tesla in a second, but this kind of goes there. Musk is very much of a class of men, public men in our society. Guys like Taibbi, guys like, obviously Musk, guys like um, Andrew Sullivan, where they had all this privilege that allowed them to get away with being boorish assholes in their private life. And pre- and kind of to play this world of oh I'm a centrist I'm a bit of a, I'm a liberal I'm super lefty, but you know like I'm I'm one of the bien pensant like sort of good thinkers in society. Well, then things like Me Too catch up to them. You know Andrew Sullivan's comments that I love to throw in his face about being uh, against any immigration after we liberalized immigration in 1965 and let brown people in. He pro- he privately says to people all the time that's the biggest mistake the U.S. ever made. In other words, it's getting too brown. Um, you know, Taibbi has now become a courtier to oligarchic style rich assholes, right? Yep. These guys all, they were always what they are now. They always were. They just were able to hide it with good PR and Matt they, Taibbi and was always called the ni- out on. Matt Taibbi was always the nicest guy in the room. He was to you. And to all the, the people guy, and to all age. the people I and to all the people I worked with. I, I know a lot of people who have quite different experiences. I know, I'm, I'm just with. saying, I mean, I only have yeah. to insert that because I spent a lot of time with the guy, but I, you know, sure. I know when he was younger and working in other, in Russia and what he was accused of and what he actually wrote himself. So, but, yeah. but go ahead with oh, your, yeah. I mean, the so, type so of the guy. Point being that like these guys, these guys, and, and probably on some sense, they are that, thing, right? They are okay. Most of the time. But then at some point in their career, the sins they committed in Moscow or Andrew Sullivan commits in p- parties in DC or Musk offering a horse to an employee to have sex with them. Like this stuff catches up with them. <laughs> and quiet. their reaction to that is not like, wow, I really fucked up and I need to reassess myself. I need to grow up. I need to be a man about this in the, you know, in the sort of human sense of it. Their reaction is like, how fucking dare you call me out on that? Right. So Musk builds a whole career on catering to ideas like climate change, on ideas like electric cars, rockets to get to Mars, all this stuff. And he gets enormous subsidies from the federal government, and he gets a lot of help from the federal government. And he is your perfect sort of Ross Perot style guy who builds this huge business out of out of basically government contracts, right? And government support. But then some transformation happened, which didn't happen to Ross Perot, by the way where these guys start to believe their own bullshit, that they're the ones who invented it all and created it all, rather than being hard workers who got really lucky and were pretty smart, which is great, but you're not, you're not fucking Napoleon. You're not the smartest guy that ever lived. Musk is certain he is. And so he created this whole world with Tesla, where I think I said to you a couple months ago, would you ever buy a Tesla? 
And you didn't answer me, but I was, I was going to ask you that today. Uh, no, and, no, but, I, but to be clear, like I had this one experience. I know it's one, but I've heard enough. My friend, I don't think he'll mind me saying Jim Babowski listener. He owned one and he just told me about the nightmare, this whole long story uh-huh. about what happened and how they really screwed him over. The screen wasn't working. They're like, we got to repair the screen yeah. and then turn to find out it was just a software update. The screen was totally fine, but they were ready to charge him, yeah. you know, and it was just like the word and, and the seatbelt stuff and like a lot of the parts I've heard. I've just started to believe all the criticism that I like really had, as you know, this kind of block in my way because I wanted so badly for those cars to succeed because, of course, I got my first sure. you know, plug in hybrid in 2010. And for that reason, and I've, you know, whatever. But I wanted electric well, cars and, and to succeed. Know, and I still you know, th- they have now. So that's the problem. Sure. For I, Tesla. Musk was tapping into something, by the way, that people don't really think about because no one really pays a lot of attention to the 1930s. In the 1930s, the fascists were selling the future. They were not throwback traditional conservatives. They were revolutionaries who wanted to send people to the moon. Right. Who wanted, you know, the Italians, like fast cars, Italy and tanks that were fast and motion and, and, and getting all the barriers out of the way to go to some brighter future. That's originally what fascism sold. So while you look at Tesla and you kind of go, okay, like, how did this, how did this guy fuck this up? Like he had this brand and everything. It's not necessarily, um, it doesn't necessarily contradict, right? He was, he could be the guy he is now and do what he was doing then, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, it's and it, but in the, the larger sense, in the larger sense, it is fucking suicidal as a business proposition because he created again, just like with Twitter, he's got a business with one clientele. And he's pissing off that clientele. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's it really stupid. is, there really are, Three men who have in the last couple of years or even couple of months or weeks all pissed away what they built. Donald Trump by running for president. Yep. And, and I think, you know, everything that's happened, I think he's lost it all. I really do financially, especially because it's going to be harder for him to make money legally in places like New York because of the lawsuits right. that. So Trump, obviously. Kanye West, who is worth billions yep. and just had to say a bunch of shit. He could have shut up. And yesterday there was a reporting that said he's been talking about Hitler for years and just nobody said anything. He's 20, Kanye. 20 years. 20 so, years. so there's Kanye West pissing away billions of dollars, literally over a few days. And now yeah. Elon Musk, these three guys in like who are worth maybe billions each. Are oh, all, all, uh, now all worth pennies and a dollar to what they were just a couple of weeks ago. And maybe there's maybe there's tons of these guys throughout future. And I'm not the historian that you are. Uh, you know, somebody else could suggest. I'm sure it's happened plenty of times. But three these three super iconic men in the last couple of months, mostly gone all their money. So <laughs> I think Twitter and the Internet in general is like a rocket under this stuff. Henry Ford was the guy who promoted the elders of protocols of the elders of Zion and had an anti-Semitic newspaper in, in but that, the Midwest, like an but, openly, you know, like it's, so the, there, there have been a lot of really, yeah, but that stuff didn't sink crazy it, rich guys. That stuff didn't, it didn't sink, get out. It, it, yeah. Whether it got out or not. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about someone that just sank himself by his, by his right. comments. I see what you mean. Yeah. Because, because now you can't, it's easy for these guys to hit the public airwaves and, you know, 300 out of 400, 400 million Americans will hear it. That's true. From the that's mouth. true. But and that's what screws them. That's what screws but them. There's still, no mediation all these between other them. billionaire CEOs and almost every other company are they're quiet as they have PR shops that they go through with yes. every public statement. They don't take questions from the press like it's they're not out front in the public and, and on social media for the most part. And yes, it, it's it, let me put it this way. I'm a small fry when it comes to the world of big business, right? I'm a very small fry. I have a saying that I say to people in DC all the time. I never, ever want to be mentioned in the Washington Business Journal for my entire career. It's just bad. It doesn't do any good. But what happens to these guys is really fascinating because there's two things that happen. The internet destroys them, but before it destroys them, it gives them this hugely inflated sense of their place in the world and all of this ego reinforcement and confirmation. And, you know, you go go to some incredibly dumb Elon Musk tweet and his tweets are awful. They're stupid. And then you'll see 75 people below it. Like you're the best man. You're going to send us to Mars. Like, and you know, I think that that's what he's getting out of this. And I don't think, 
I don't think $44 million, like if he had to pay another $44 million and he, or billion, excuse me, and he had it, I think he would for that yeah, kind of anybody, a, anybody and everybody can understand the little dopamine hit, the little high you get when people like what you're doing yeah. uh, on, on Twitter or anywhere. I, I, I certainly can speak to that as a, as a expert, but Elon Musk went on stage. So in real life, he went in front of people with Dave Chappelle and arena and he got booed so hard for so long, apparently. And I wonder what, 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 what how that he, then he went on and lied, I think on Twitter and it just sounded so much he like did. Trump. Right. It was just 10% of crazy lefties in the crowd. Booing. Is that what he said? I, I, yeah, I got to tell you something. It really struck me that Chappelle brought him out on stage. Yeah, but me too. I'm, and I'm not I'm in super, a good way for Chappelle. Super disturbed by it. Just another strike against him for sure. So not I great. think Chappelle is a is a saner. He's not crazy, and he's not a, you know he's not uh, he hasn't I, fallen for it. But the tendency is there, right? I it's don't know. that sort of. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's got some kind of, I don't know, Christian Finnegan was talking about what's happened to him, and maybe he is a little bit, you know, Dave Chappelle's a genius in so many different ways, but like, he's, yeah, you get older and you get better, and he kind of fits in, Chappelle to some extent fits into that category that you were talking about yep. earlier of men, and, you know, Christian mentioned also just that the fact that, Ch- you know, Chappelle calling himself the greatest of all time. Like, nobody does that. Comedians yes, don't do that. Chris Rock always said great comedians yeah. are, are not like cool, basically. And no, exactly. I mean, so remember that guy? I think he's still around. Charlemagne the God. Yeah. Yeah. Who it, turn- it turns out is a pretty shitty dude in many ways. Yeah. I've never been I a fan. F- no, but I remember the first time I saw him, I was like, what kind of asshole calls himself that? Like, what a weird, what a weird thing. And, and not ironically. Right. Like he wasn't make he doesn't not a guy who makes fun of himself. And that just seemed like such a weird like, yeah, I, I think growing up in a big Irish family where you got called on your bullshit yeah. intensely and viciously every time you pronounced any gives you good antenna for people yeah. like that. Well, and Dave I just, Chappelle definitely grew up in that family. You know, I mean, Chris Rock definitely grew up in that although, family. So, but like that, you know, Dave Chappelle says he grew up where I live, but he really grew up in fucking Silver Spring, Maryland. And don't ever let him fucking tell you any different. I know where Dave Chappelle grew up. Nonetheless, in the suburbs north of me. Nonetheless, Dave Chappelle came up in the comedy ranks with the rest of us ahead of me, and he got his balls busted. He got, you know, he went through, you know, I'm sure was humbled. I will say that for every comedian. But anyway, enough about Chappelle and Elon going on stage, getting booed was just. I wonder what. If anything, that that does. And then he goes on Twitter where he has this different audience in this different stage, lies about it, and he's back and he's got. Is he getting any other work done? Is when does the I mean, well, to go back to what we're I didn't finish this before about Tesla. Here's the deal. He just sold another three point five or three point six billion dollars. of Tesla shares. At a certain point, he's going to be below the level of shareholding in that company. Where he can control it. He is in big danger of a shareholder's revolt of Tesla taking the company away. Really? And I got to tell you something. If I was sure, of course, because he's he owns less than 40 percent of it now, a lot less than 40 percent. And it's structured in a way to enhance his ability to control it. But at a certain point, they're pulling engineers and lawyers and whatever from Tesla and from SpaceX to work at to work at Twitter. No. Yes, of course. They've been doing it since like day one. He walked in. If I'm a shareholder in Tesla and my stock, oh, by the way, stock price today, last time I checked, was 150. It was 420, like uh, two years ago. So he's well below. He's getting close to a third of his stock price of what it was two years ago. If I'm a shareholder in Tesla, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? How is this guy? We're we're dying. And by the way, the competition's only going to get harder. And yeah, harder no, and that's harder the that's as the, everybody's coming in. That's the biggest point right there. Right. I just drove in uh, Dan McDonald's Hyundai, uh, uh, iconic, ionic, Excellent, right? Fucking beautiful, great. J- yep. You know, just as good, if not better, than a Tesla. Well, definitely better than a Tesla. Definitely better. Yeah, and you know, speaking of Tesla, like you get at where he sh- he has shown a big an ability to do some great things, but also a complete inability to change course. And the point where I would say that's the most salient is in calling. They're driving assist, self-driving, invest, like refusing to put LIDAR in it, like doing all these things that Tesla's Tesla self-driving is going to be the worst one in the market in two years. <laughs> and 
and it doesn't work. And it's going to, yeah. th- there's regulatory problems coming for him that are really going to blow your doors off. And so like, I, you know, he just is not a guy who can adjust. I think he got incredibly lucky early on. And I think he did some good work in the middle. And now I think he is just the raging man child ego vestige of that guy who first got to PayPal. Uh, any other thoughts about this or anything else before I let you go? Uh, yes. Keep an eye on when the ground freezes in Ukraine. Oh, yes. Because, I, because I suspect when the ground freezes and it won't be the end until the end of this month, beginning of January. Um, I think you might see some fairly awesome things happening for the Ukrainians. Such as? So. But once the ground freezes, like, they can actually move off the roads. The mud there is unbelievable. There's a video you can find. The ground there that, freezing allows them to move. It doesn't, it doesn't stop them from moving. It, it allows, they've, right, been, in the, they've this, been stuck it, in the mud in the, in the season of uh, the mud season. Yeah, the mud gets like five, six feet deep. Right. And not even a tank can get through it. And right. wheeled vehicles can't get through it at all. So, so it's, uh, they need the ground to freeze. And they are far better prepared for the winter than the Russians are. So I would suspect if I were the Ukrainians, I don't want to let the Russians sit for two months, three months and recharge themselves. Are there and, still and, a lot of Russians occupying and in Ukraine? So the numbers that I have heard is that there's about 170,000 Russian troops in Ukraine. And they're trying to hold back another 200,000 to train them and get them equipped. I, I think the 170 in Ukraine is right. I'm skeptical of the 200,000 outside. Um, but, you know, nobody really knows. I mean, it's a, I'm sure the Ukrainians know, but but it's not public knowledge mm. for sure. Right. Um, but, you know, Russia's bigger problem is not the number of men they have. It's giving them boots, giving them working rifles, artillery. It's there. It's um, the those, Russians are starting to those men's commitment and incentive to fight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I'm guessing. I mean, there's literally I saw something the other day online. It was awful. It was a row of Wagner mercenaries. About 20 guys, all dead in a row. They weren't executed. They were all walking right next to each other and walked right into an ambush and all got shot oh. dead in a 15 seconds or something. They didn't even have time to run. I mean, they all just fell over. And when you see stuff like that, it's like, man, you know, these guys are just out of their depth, out of ammunition, out of luck, and unfortunately not out of Russia. So. All right. Well, I'm glad we did get to that. And I appreciate all of this, Bill, as always, great to get your insight on everything. And go follow Bill on Post and Mastodon, where you can learn more. And Bill will be in D.C., and I say the same snarky bullshit I say on Twitter. We love it. All right, bud. Thank you. Cheers. All right. There he goes. Bill B. in D.C. Go say hello to him and get a good look at his face that he smashed into the ground. Uh, okay. Awesome, awesome conversation. Always love talking with him. And also on Mondays, I generally get Mara Quint on, and today is no exception. We love talking to Mara. You can now follow her on TikTok, as well as, of course, all the rest of the social media networks. We talked about her new TikTok posts, which are fun, and so much more. Always love talking to Mara. Always a pleasure covering all kinds of things about life and the world. And today was no exception. You can find her at the Americans for Tax Freedom. And you can support her there and say hello to her on all those social media platforms. So let's just do it, shall we? Here it is. Mara Quint, Mara Mondays. All right. Well, we did it again. We made it to Monday and we successfully got Mara Quint to sit down with us on what we affectionately call Mara Mondays. Thank you for taking pity. I'm here. <laughs> Where else would I want to be? This is it. This is the only place. I, apparently, you'd like to be at live uh, concert venues because you're you're going out and you're seeing live performance this evening. You're going out to see the great band. They might be giants, and you you just went out and saw uh, live music. So that's apparently your thing. That you're you're back. You're doing it. Exciting. I am doing it. Yeah. No. I. I. You know. I love concerts. I love them, and I got really really fortunate on this one. Well. Okay. Actually, it's a, it's a whole thing. I bought these tickets for this They Might Be Giant show in 2019. What? And yeah. And oh, and they keep right. getting They kept postponing, kept right. postponing because of COVID. And then unfortunately, because uh, one of them got into a car accident this summer. So it just mm. kept getting canceled and rescheduled. But the problem is when you buy concert tickets in 2019, and the show is not until 2022, I bought the tickets in 2019. <laughs> 
I, I must have been like just having a bout of like, I don't know what, like hopefulness or something. Apparently, I thought the world was all going to get better. I bought four tickets to this concert <laughs> in 2019 thinking, I, I didn't know. I mean, like I was dating someone at the time. I like, but I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Who's not going to want to go to this concert with me? I'm gonna. It's, it's going to be no problem. It's like three months away. I'm going to put together. I'm going to find three people. And we're going to have fun. I have had three years. No one. I have no one to go to the concert. Really? We should have. Oh my God. We should have done a sweepstakes, a giveaway. You should have. You, you, you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have offered that up because you were sure you would get some, some folks. And now. I, well, here's the thing. Like, even it has been three years and it has been in my head the whole time of like, of entering relationships even where it's like, oh, all right. Okay, great. Yeah. Oh, you're going to come with me to the Name of Giants concert. I have tickets for it. We're like, this is great. And then that would end. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well you, you are going to come with me. And then, and then I like meet a friend and I'm like, <laughs> oh, but you, this is great. We can hang out. Like I have gone through so many and now I really do feel like it's like ghosts of Christmas past where I'm just like, now I have to look at the th last three years of my life and be like, what hast thou gotten from it? Like, this I, it it's These concert aesthetic. tickets were basically like a threshold upon meeting a new friend or a date where you would say, could I, could I go to the, they might be giants with this person? And also you would work it in like, oh, well, you know what? Do you like they might be giants? Cause I have tickets. They're going to be effective at some point in the future. <laughs> right. And when I bought them, and I mean, this is the fun thing too. When I bought them in 2019, I was dating someone. I don't even think I told him that I bought them. Cause I was like, I don't think. I don't think this would be a very fun person to go to a They Might Be Giants concert with. Like well, it was like a threshold of just like, I, that's not, that's going to ruin this experience. We have to do this and publicly. So, we have to do this publicly. We have to say like people that Mark went, go, go to a concert with Mark went. I'm sure you're a very fun person <laughs> to, to be around much less at a concert. Oh. This is how, this is where I am. This is where I'm like, I'm coming onto podcast to beg people to be my friend. That, you no, know not at that all. Is, I think, right. no, that's, that's, that's hilarious. True. That I, is where I am. <laughs> I think you live in a, this place in Pennsylvania, and I think that most people can relate to that. You're not in a big city where it'd be easier, where you'd have a whole bunch more people probably just to pick and choose from. Uh, and so it's, I mean, anybody can relate to this situation, having tickets and at, especially at this point, I think this probably makes it even harder because I bet you there is a certain segment of the population. Maybe I'm that person who just, you know, it's going to take a lot for me to go out and be around a ton of other people this time of year, especially you get 17 viruses. I'm sure that yeah. is partially standing in your way. And by the way, let's just be honest. Stop with this. If you went out and you just waved those three tickets like, hi, this is me. This is what I look like. Who wants to go to a concert with me? You'd have. I mean, a bunch of people. No, that would want to no, go. no, I do not. That's not. I don't look that good. Pete. <laughs> you you overestimate my value because, but uh, no, that no, doesn't. I, I go out wrong. and I wave those tickets, and people go, "Someone's mom is looking for them." Did you, <laughs> does anybody? Did anyone? You act like, like there's mom? not. She's clearly looking for some kids here. Like you act like there's not a that, huge section of pornography dedicated to mom and mom type. There, there is, but those moms do not look like I look like. <laughs> you are <laughs> first of all. First of all, <laughs> I wouldn't know. That means Listen, anyone over twenty five, and I, uh, that's it. Like the twenty. That means that means you're getting a twenty six year old, slightly slightly younger than I'm. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't fit the categories, unfortunately. Of uh, just can wave some tickets on the street and get interest. Not at all. How so much of a truth do you think it is, seriously, though, that people, I mean, even, I bet you go to that concert tonight and there's a lot of empty seats because people just don't want to go out and be around other people. I mean, if you've been reading the news and looking at what's going on, or if you just have kids, like, uh, or, or no, like, nobody's in school, teachers are out, like, everybody's absent. These illnesses going around right now at the end of December are pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, no, it's rough. I, I totally get it. I mean, look, in the last, like, three weeks alone, I've, I, I feel like the fisherman who's just like, oh, God, man. I, I had so many, I had so many bites. I had one, I almost reeled in, almost in the boat. I could see him coming out of the water and then boom, gone. Like I've had that happen <laughs> over and over. Like, I mean, and, and I'm talking everyone. I've like, would you like to date me? Because you could come with me to this concert. Nope, no, that doesn't work. It's a Sunday night thing. So then I went with family and I'm That's like, all right, thing. hey, you're my cousin. I, I had a yes on that one. That one held for like a couple of days. And then, oh, you know what? Never mind. Uh, I, my, one of my dearest, oldest friends, I was, I've been trying to pull her in the boat for like, for three years now. I've been like, you, you should come with me to the show. That's gone. That yes and no has I gone back and you, forth. I think you, 
this is like fascinating, but I, I also think <laughs> now strike two. Number one, everybody's getting sick. Number two, Sunday night. You got Sunday yeah. night tickets. Yeah. Yeah. That's I tough. Know. Who's going out on a Sunday night? Who are these people? Um, cool people. Yeah. Me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's like the end of the year. What? Who cares if it's Sunday? Fair enough. Like, Fair this enough. is not you gotta, Monday I, that matters. I, I'm convinced. This is, like, this is a bullshit Monday. We shouldn't even be having this Monday, frankly. Like the Monday leading into the holidays. This whole week should be considered a bye week. Like we just get it off. Like just stay in bed, rest up, I do what you got to do. Agree. Make I your cookies. Fu- fully, fully agree. I think these last two weeks are just bullshit. And uh, that's why you're actually going to the Southern Hemisphere at the end of the week. I'm running as far away as I can possibly run from my life. Yeah. Why are you going to uh, to Australia? Why there? Why now? Oh, God. Why there? Have you ever wa- You've always wanted to go. Is it one of those? I have. I have always wanted to go. Mm-hmm. I have always wanted to go to Australia. Uh, it's always been on my list. And I frankly thought this past year, I hit a point of going, oh, you know what? I'm never going to go to Australia. Like that is just so far and so expensive. When am I ever going to have the time and money to go to Australia? I should probably make peace with like, that's never going to happen in my life. And then what happened was uh, over the summer, I met a friend of a friend who uh, who is Australian and who lives in Australia. And so it started like planting the idea in my head. And that person was like nice enough to be like, well, if you come, you know, you can crash here for a couple of days. I'll show you around kind of thing. And nice. I was like, Oh wait, wait, now this is real. Now there, now I could actually do this. And then I looked at my, you know, credit card miles and was like, Oh no, I have enough miles. Like I could, I could reasonably go to Australia. And then because I'm an idiot, I was just like, yeah, no. Okay. And then I just sort of shut my eyes and, and booked it without thinking about oh, it again. Not an idiot. We love That's it. We're, we're very excited. We're rooting for you in the Southern hemisphere and hoping that you make all kinds of discoveries. Are you, how are you feeling about, uh, what is it? 22 hours or, or something on an airplane? Oh, it's like a 24 hour trip. Um, and then, I mean, it's not the traveling there. That's hard. The hardest is that once you get there, they actually don't let you enter the country until you uh, fight and defeat a kangaroo. And I don't know if I'm ready for the kangaroo fight. Oh, I uh, didn't realize of, of that. The, the travel, but I thought I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Oh, yeah. The, you have to leaving the airport, actually. It's like it's a thing. You basically full, they have them right at the doors. Full grown or is it? A and sp- you have to bring your own gloves or, you know, <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, did, I am not. I am surprised that I'd never heard that. Because not a lot of people go to Australia, so we don't talk about it, I think. Huh. It doesn't get as much exposure over here. Also, not a lot of people make it. So, you know, no one wants to, like, who wants to talk about that when it's just like, what are you going to say? Like, oh, yeah, I flew there, and then a kangaroo beat me up, and they made me get back on the flight. You don't right. tell that to anyone. You keep that to yourself to the end of your life. Like, you don't Yeah, you don't yeah, share that's that humiliating. That is, yeah, exactly. that is tough. Nobody but wants I, to. I, I've been practicing. Um, you know, like, I look in the mirror, and I'm just like, well... If I could just take all the hatred I feel for myself and turn it at one of God's creatures, oh, God. then I'm going to fucking crush this thing. It's going to be amazing. Is it true that <laughs> the kangaroo has so much empathy for the way you're feeling about yourself that when you come in, it just puts its hand on your shoulder and goes, you know what? Just come in. Don't even worry about it. You don't even have to fight me. It looks like you know things are, are grim. <laughs> you've, you've spent 24 hours on a flight alone with your, your own thoughts. Uh, you've, you've done all the fighting. Just you go ahead. You shall yeah, pass. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for. That's very yeah. exciting. Uh, I'm very excited. I hope that you will uh, make social media postings from there. And sure, how long will you be there in total? Um, like ten days. Wow, we. I know. Okay. But you can't go all that. Like you cannot go that far and then not stay. And when I told some people that I I know in Australia that I was going for ten days, like in my mind, this is the longest I've ever gone almost anywhere. Yeah. They were just like, "Oh my god, it's so short. You're going. That's why." What do you do? like to them? It's like ten days, less than two off. weeks. It's I mean, like, what are ten, you doing? Ten days anywhere. That's good for you. I mean, good. Yeah. You're giving the rest of us permission to take such a trip. I think this is exciting. I think you should. You know what? Fuck it. I think you should lead. Why are you I acting should... like? Oh, I don't know why. You're the one. The rest of us are like. Oh, I wish I had the confidence and the and the wherewithal and the desire and time or money, whatever it is. I think you should lead the rest of us to taking 10 days off, frankly, anywhere, much less in another hemisphere. No, it's true. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to do it because I know that our office is going to be shut down for some time. I saved up some vacation time. So like, I have a lot that I'm playing with here. There you go. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, why not? Absolutely. We should all take off. But, I mean, just in general, and not everyone gets vacation days at all because our system is so completely fucked. But if you have vacation days, use them. Never, ever 
Never wait, let your vacation days go to waste. Absolutely use everyone. Use the use the personal days. Yeah. Use the whatever if they give you a floating holiday. I don't who cares what your holiday is. Just um, today's my celebration of me day. It's yeah. like, you know, just take everything, everything. Don't leave anything on the table. That's Good very advice. important. Will you be uh TikToking from <laughs> I'll try. I see now that you are your tick and uh-huh. you're talking and yeah. you're, you, I'm enjoying these. Uh, really? Is that the word you're going with? Enjoying? Uh, I haven't watched any of them, but I, mm-hmm. I talk to you like I, I want, I, I think I've, I'm weird. I'm not your TikTok audience because when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you and I feel like it's too one sided for me. But what are you doing? You're exactly my TikTok audience because my, I, it is so weird. I joined TikTok, what, like a week ago? Oh, yeah. Because I I just started feeling guilty posting comedy on Twitter. Like, I felt like I could still share hatred of billionaires and of Elon Musk, but I kind of didn't want to put jokes or anything that was, like, just happy on Twitter anymore. Like, that felt wrong. So I was just looking for another medium, and there didn't seem to be any. And I was like, well, what is this TikTok? Oh, let's see what it is. And I just kind of got, like, a little bit tipsy and was like, all right, I'll just hold this in front of me and talk. And uh, And then... TikTok, it seems to be like run by this like really powerful, insane algorithm that decides who you're for. And it has decided that if you are a like, particularly if you're a bearded man between the ages of, I want to say, 45 and 60, (laughs) then like, that's it. It's just like, oh, you're going to like this girl. That's it. That's going to, this is, this is the, this is the person for you. I got like 500 followers overnight and they are all the same guy it's just like the oh, same picture over and over and over does it look like, like your names. dating app it 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 doesn't even like it looks like part of my dating app but it doesn't even look like just the the dudes i would match with on a dating app it is a very very specific demographic of so dudes. so i, I guess is, i didn't even realize that but weird. when you see you uh when you get new followers on tiktok you can see who they are they generally have a, a profile photo yeah i'm yeah. desperate for like i'm like it's, and especially because when I turned it on, I was like, I started telling these random, like, sort of dating stories. And in my life, when I tell those stories, I'm usually telling them to, like, my girlfriends. So it was really, really weird for me because I was expecting, like, in my head, I was talking to a bunch of girlfriends. And then I got this, like, nope, I was talking to bearded 50-year-old dudes. Gosh, That's who it's I was so to. interesting. Well, I it's guess I don't strange. know. I, I don't know how that works, but that, that could lead. Uh, I don't either, but I'm going to have to definitely like post a video soon just being like, fuck well, a patriarchy down with men. Like I got to like skew things a little bit. Well, you know what? It, it all leads to one place. Self-hatred? Only fans. No. Oh, OK. There yeah, are so thing. many TikTok people. I'm not, like, I'm not going to. I need to just liberate this. Okay. I on Instagram and TikTok, I have clicked on enough uh, women who I find attractive that it's feeding me a lot of them. And I have realized that several cases, they advertise their other social media networks and they are often uh, Instagram leading to only fans because a lot of this stuff is monetizable. If yeah. you start on TikTok, you can monetize anything, but if you, the, the, the only fan stuff. And by the way, I had a publicist pitched me and I wanted to ask you about this on the record because I hope this isn't weird, but this publicist is like this woman got her uh, law degree and she passed the bar, but she was making six figures on TikTok, And oh, wow. so she did. She's not doing that. And like, I kind of am. I don't know. It's a pretty safe place to make money. I mean, you can just you're just up there doing videos for people. What do you think about about that way as a way to earn money for people? Well, I think think people should earn money however they can earn money because we live in a terrible exactly especially that do what you can do i mean i have no problem with only fans i have no problem with porn i have no problem with sex work of any sort like do whatever you you want or whatever works for you or whatever you can do in general but i i don't i don't feel that it's necessarily like to call it a safe place i don't i don't feel that that's true even i mean i've been there for like i said a week and i've already started blocking people um because it's kind of scary actually yeah what i mean why is that what do people what makes you feel unsafe there already comments well, i mean i think i think it's mostly because i already had a crew of people on twitter and there were there was already like hatred towards me from like alt-right nazis and so right 
there's, you know, it's more personal. TikTok's more personal because now you're looking at my face. Right. You might be looking like, you know, you there's there's a physical background where, you know, if you're you maybe you can like try and track where I am. Like there's a little bit a little bit more um, vulnerability for me, not for everybody. Like some people have no problem with that. And I'm sure I'll develop that callous if I keep doing it. But for right now, there's still this sort of like fear that like someone's going to say something really, really cruel and hurtful. And they'll be like, you know, if I'm on Twitter and people are just like, you're an ugly, dumb whore who has no lips and you've got an ugly, like I would get those types of comments. But it didn't matter because it was just a single picture and I knew exactly what they were responding to. And I was just like, yeah, that's not really true. Whereas here, there's much more of a like physical vulnerability of, I mean, like for comments and things where it can be like, oh, yeah, no, that you actually you could hurt my feelings still. So I have to like maintain a a hard outer shell (laughs) for a moment until I get past that. Uh, So you're going to you're going to stick with it. You're going to continue to make uh, funny videos, stories. I don't know. I might. Um, I just I haven't found a better place yet like yeah. i i just want to find some place where i can just say my stupid little i thing. hope you do it wherever you're creating i'm i'm following you i didn't realize that you didn't have lips though until now yeah no i don't actually they're just they're gone i'm i'm you know one of those no lip toy women <laughs> it's a bummer but no you know, lip I mean, toy. Like, you're yeah, like yeah <laughs> yeah in high school we used to have did you did you guys like did you know about the like bee sting stuff where it was like literally like bee venom that it was like a lip gloss with bee venom that we put on our lips to try and like plump. Oh no! Because you try and get like you know a more pouty, uh, you know, attractive uh, lip situation. No, going. I heard my my daughter mentioned something about you know some kind of lip enhancement once, and I was I was uh, I, I tried my best to put an end to that conversation. Yeah, yeah. You know, look, uh-huh. the world is is set up to make us feel terrible about ourselves. Yeah, so. well, I didn't and realize it. Until, until now. I had I had no idea. So just for the record. Uh, yeah, okay. you haven't done that. You don't. No, I hadn't noticed that you didn't. That you, I hadn't noticed your lips. Anything about particularly? They're fine. They're just you know. <laughs> just, they're like the rest of me, just not just, good enough. Uh, yeah, exactly. Nothing's ever mm-hmm. good enough. And nothing, I just nothing. I mean, people saying things. I don't know what people say. I've never. I can't think of saying really even being flirty on social media. I, I've told you, like the one, <laughs> the one, the creepiest thing I ever did was when I slipped into some like college athletes DMs and I and I said congratulations when they won the national championship. I think I that's told you that. That's creepy as hell. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Football and I, and like I that. that's the I think that's the worst thing I've done and I I it felt bad enough when I realized it. I was like, "Oh, that that wasn't appropriate probably and I'm not <laughs> ever talking yeah. to a stranger again." People have no problem just kind of like mm. I I have no problem. I mean, to me, I'm nobody. It doesn't m- bother me. Like when people talk to me on social media, I think that's great because whatever, yeah. I'm just a person. They're people, you know, that's fine. Be interesting. But I was having this conversation the other day with a friend. Like it, it's one thing when someone comes and they want to talk to you and they're engaging a conversation and like it's a two way street, like, you know, where it feels like someone's come up to you at a party. Right. And they're like, oh, and they're trying to engage you. And that's pleasant. That's great. I love that. What I don't like <laughs> that has happened is when uh, like men in particular are trying to hit on you or trying to talk to you, but they've seen a lot of who you are and they offer nothing about themselves. Uh. And there have been so many times where someone's just like, like slid into my messages and just been like, uh, you know, we're perfect together. I, I know so much about you and you and I are perfect together. And they'll like keep talking to the point where I'm like, what is your name? You know, sofa lover 23. Like, do, I don't even know your first name. Who are you? It's great that you've developed this whole idea of me, but like, can you tell me anything about you? Like, even try to make yourself interesting to me because it's not working right now. That one, that one, I don't like. I, 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 I get so overwhelmed by. I have been getting overwhelmed by the idea of jumping into another social media platform. I actually saw that it's you were terrible. TikToking, and I was like, I'm admire. I admire that you're out there adapting. And I think that's uh, probably going to be a good thing for you. But I, I'm just so in, I've been very intimidated by trying to build something somewhere else and, and, and even having a, a desire or need to kind of do it. But part of the I don't care about building anything anywhere else. I'm on Mastodon, too. I was on yeah. Hive until I like forgot my password. And now I can't yeah. get back in there. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I, I'm trying them all out, but I'm, I'm not I'm not interested in like trying to build anything so much as having a dumb outlet where I can just spout off my mouth every so often. Right. <laughs> like that's the part of it that I have enjoyed. And especially when 
my spouting off my mouth makes somebody else laugh. Like that's a that's a fun back and forth. And I I hate to lose that entirely, although I am I am preparing myself to because it does feel like, okay, this these playgrounds that we had are are shutting down. That's how it feels. It does feel that way. What do you think? What are your thoughts on what's gone on this past week on Twitter? The the suspension of several journalists, the unsuspension, the the doxing claims, the Elon Musk showing up at a Twitter Spaces and then just running out. Is this guy run? I mean, is he? Uh, what's next? Where are we going? I mean, he's. <laughs> it kind of doesn't matter where we're going because he's mm. making it up as he goes. He's yeah. making it up in like, you know. It's that old sort of joke of like women are too emotional. It, most fucking men in charge are just doing everything based on like this makes me mad right yeah. now, so I'm going to do this. This makes me <laughs> sad, so I'm going to do impulsive. This. Like they're yeah, fully, fully, everything is just emotion based. There's not a goddamn logical bone in any of these fucking assholes' bodies. They just fly <laughs> off onto whatever stupid little thing they're feeling because no one ever told them that they have to regulate these things. They've never had to be a human adult person. So they're just in full toddler town all the goddamn time, just being like, I want the fucking cookie now. Like, it's uh, just (laughs) annoying as hell. So, like, who knows where it's going to go? Because who knows what, you know, he's going to see a balloon and be like, I want that balloon over there. And then we're going to have to, like, go to war with, like, you know, Denmark or something. Like, it's going to, who who knows? There's no predicting it. But as long as he is there having his little toddler tantrum, it's not a fun or safe or okay place for any of the rest of us to be because now we're just sort of in this like muck of of fear and uh unhappiness and so i i don't know but to think that there's just no plan i mean that much is that's the thing that's going to make me insane because eventually people are going he's gonna win he's gonna pull it out he's gonna make money because he's just gonna fucking luck into something if you have enough capital to buy all of the lottery tickets in the world, eventually you're going to hit one big mm. and no one's going to care that you just spent billions and billions on the losing ones first. And that's where he is right now. And that's going to make me crazy when people start going, ah, see, it was 40 chess all along. This is what he was playing. Like, right, nah, right. fuck you. He has no plans. It's just, he's just an evil, spoiled asshole. And, you know, I don't really want to provide him with stuff he can sell, which is why I don't really want to make my dumb little jokes on his site because those are, you know, so that's, that's a product. That's yeah. how you're basically, I think you mentioned that already, that you've changed yeah. your Twitter behavior and that you're mostly tweeting uh, about, uh, and, you know, making fun of billionaires and that kind of thing and specifically him and leaving more of the, the humor for TikTok and other places. Yeah, I mean, there's no good social media site. It's certainly not as though I'm saying like, oh, no, this is a good, like, there's no good place, but that's clearly a bad place. And that's also, I think, increasingly Mm. a dangerous place because I've certainly noticed a vast increase in the number of kind of right wing hate and Mm. trolls that are flooding in. So it's, it's only going to get worse and worse, I believe. And so if you are someone who has any sort of visibility or profile, the, the threats are getting more violent. It's getting more aggressive. I mean, it, it physically feels less and less safe to be there. So, you know, uh, yeah, so I'll take it other places. So upsetting and depressing. Wait, it is. What, what is this thing about? Well, what do you, I, I see JK Rowling went after Jesse gender who has been on the show. I'm a big fan of her uh, or they, I'm not sure what her pronouns are, but awesome youtube channel and was thinking actually reaching out to jesse uh i have been talking offline but what is i can't even believe jk rowling went after and you basically are supporting uh, jesse on twitter and you said jk rowling is a terrible human being what what ha- what is the deal i haven't paid much attention to jk rowling's thoughts on transgender and gender but wow uh what is happening here with this um, I, you know, it's just more of same. And I, I will I honestly, I don't know Jesse at all. I, I do not know who Jesse is. I do not know this person. This was sort of retweeted into my feed and super just, brilliant nerd who does amazing YouTube videos explaining all kinds of stuff around gender as well as like science fiction fan stuff. But yeah, it was just what the what their statement was, was just sort of a, such a straightforward statement that at this point, you know, it's fine to have been a fan of J.K. Rowling properties. But at this point, supporting J.K. Rowling is, a, you know, a harmful choice. And I 
simply agree with that. And, you know, J.K. Rowling went like and did her own like meltdown. That's just it. All of these sort of wealthy assholes are empowered to just throw public fits. And so I just I just saw her attacking this person and figured I should just use my very, very small little slice of the Internet to back. back okay. them up. Well, I mean, why? What is J.K. Rowling's? Why is she dying on this hill? Why is this a thing? I don't know, but you know, I, my guess is that J.K. Rowling has probably always been a miserable fucking cunt. That's like that's my guess, and then oh just now God. has enough platform for everyone else to find it out. That's I don't know though. I guess I don't know. You don't. <laughs> um, Sorry, did I go too far? No, okay. no, I just wasn't ready for it, and uh, <laughs> made me laugh. Uh, finally, I just have to get your take on the Trump digital trading card announcement, and just if oh, we could that's just so great. What were you, where were you and what were you doing when you <laughs> first saw this? This is like what is <laughs> making me crazy um, is that Twitter used to be a place where I got news. Like I was on top of it. I had the breaking news at the moment that it was breaking. And now Twitter's not even good for that. When I look at the trending topics, I don't see any of that stuff anymore. I have to go and like I have to act like my parents. Like I have to like read a newspaper or something to find out what's going on. So I didn't even the Trump announcement and nft stuff i found out about afterwards uh but it sounds fantastic i i love how much he is just an absolute mess and all of the republican party has to just kind of like tap dance and pretend this is okay that's wonderful i love that i want them all to just like you know centipede themselves just put you know their own heads up the next one's ass and just like form a nice little ring and then spin themselves off a ledge (laughs) like a bunch of uh you know stuck up lemmings that's What? what i'm looking for What do you think of the idea that Ron DeSantis is taking the anti-vax lane as a way to separate himself from Donald Trump, who is, I guess, pro-vax? Yeah, I don't think that. Yeah, Ron DeSantis is, I mean, he's just trying to take all of the sort of like most extreme lanes, actually. What he's doing in Florida is absolutely terrifying. And, you know, I only hope that people are paying enough attention to recognize that he is worse than Trump because he is in in so many ways, even worse than Trump. He's not, I mean, he's worse than Trump in every way in that like Trump is the one of the worst people on the planet. At least sometimes he was so terrible that it was almost entertaining. Ron DeSantis doesn't even have that level. Like there's not even anything like, like he never is going to, say to a little kid like oh hey you still believe in santa because at seven it's marginal like at least occasionally we got like so such over the top obnoxiousness from trump that we could kind of laugh and just be like what a fucking jackass but like desantis we don't even get that it's just like oh oh i'm just staring in the face of evil oh okay yeah that's that's right well said yes yes i think you've nailed it i think you've nailed him well well, we're gonna see what's gonna happen we're gonna see what's gonna happen as a dumb sentence that people say yeah at the end of the thing it is what it is you know we'll see what's uh, who knows do you like that one it is what it is yeah yeah i've used that a couple times in the last week alone and that's when you know you're out of things to say that's because we were all giving up because it's just it's holidays it's end of the year and the end of the world so it's just like it just all seems kind of pointless can we just ride (laughs) this out until i mean like that's they promised us so much with this climate disaster like it's happening it's the same thing with fascism. Like, it's all happening, but it's so slow. You know, like, we're impatient. You wish we're it would speed watchers. up. <laughs> I want it all at once. Just like, all right. Like, I gotta I gotta wait now. I gotta wait for until the next season kicks Where are up. You on oh, an a- am I Earth dying? <laughs> Where are you on an I, asteroid? Yeah, like, all one day. I want to just, like, <laughs> I will just sit on my couch and let's just end it all here. Let's the just return get of Jesus. Do you think he'll be back soon? <laughs> I mean, it's his birthday. I don't know. We'll see, right? Like, I, I would. I'm skipping my birthday. So, uh, you like, are. Mm-hmm. I'm skipping my birthday. Why are you doing that? Well, because I am leaving. Uh, I'm getting on a plane on December 23rd, and I am arriving on December 25th. And because I'm crossing the date line, December 24th is not happening for me. Which means, haha! I didn't age this year. I found a loophole. I'm going to find a way to get to your uh, plane captain to make an announcement <laughs> of like crash this plane into the water. No, Jesus, want. no. <laughs> to... 
No, but no, because the, the the captain's gonna get out. But as <laughs> captain speaking, I just want to let everybody know we've got a very special uh, passenger joining us. Mara you Quinta, my she's in uh, aisle thirteen, a next to a very big fella. Not a lot of space for her, but it is her birthday, so wish her one. The nice thing is, if that were to happen. You, that was no one would understand what he was saying. That's so like you did it far more clearly. <laughs> Everyone would just be like, "Did he say there's like a terrorist on board?" Or like, what's <laughs> that? I don't. Are we panicking uh, did or are he we say okay? There's a terror. I don't know why I did it there and pilot voice. There's a terrorist, <laughs> or did he wish someone a happy birthday? I don't know. I'm confused too. <laughs> not, I'm not sure. There's a knife, but I don't know if that's for cake or for stabbing. It's really. I confusing. think you're going to meet uh, new friends at tonight's concert as well as <laughs> on your flight. I think nothing, and as long as we get to ride it out, uh, talking to you on Mondays. Or everybody's winning. Hashtag winning. I will talk to you every Monday from whichever continent I am in. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll try to check in with you in Australia. Yeah. But if it doesn't yeah, work, do it doesn't it. work. But that would be a really fun to have, uh, you know, the, the sounds I of Australia. I think they have Wi-Fi there. I'm not sure, but I think <laughs> they do. I'll let you know. Good luck not getting the shit kicked out of you by a kangaroo. <laughs> and thank you for talking to me. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. All right, there she goes, off to Australia. There she is, Mara Quint on TikTok. Follow her there and say hello for me. Thank you very much, Mara. Thank you very much, Bill B in DC. Thank you for listening to today's show. Got some great guests that are going to be joining me still yet this week. I've got Jeff Jarvis and Dr. Arthur Kaplan, Chrissy Greer, and you never know who else. Let me know who you want to hear. Stand up with Pete at gmail.com. I've been giving getting lots of great suggestions lately, by the way. So keep those coming. Stand up with Pete at gmail.com. Support the show at standupwithpete.com or patreon.com slash Pete Dominic. Cannot do it without your support and your paid subscription. So please sign up now. John Carroll is a singer and songwriter, an Emmy Award winner and contributor and writer of this song. So go buy that, johncarroll.org. And thank you again. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye-bye. There's a whole lot more of us who know us right. They'll keep right on ignoring us if we keep things right. We got to open up the window to let in some light. You got to stand up and Stand up, you gotta stare the devil straight in the eyes. We got to let him know it's his turn to go. See it clear and all you hear is a lie. Don't get up off of your butt, get down off of your fence. And even if it ain't a very friendly audience, well, they'll begin to listen when you start making sense. And you stand up. Stand our ground and then stand up, stand up. Well, the founding fathers saw the land for all. They had to stand up, they had to stand up. They had a keen imagination for a crystal ball, drawing all the plans of stand up. But all they had to go on was the time they were in with other causes for laws. And since they weren't even sent, they knew. Change was gonna come before the change could begin. They had to stand up. All right, they had to stand up. We got to stand up. We got to look the devil square in the eye. We gotta let him know it's his time to go to make it clear when all we hear is a lie. See him flee the scene of that experiment If you stand up All right, we got to speak up We got to reach up And raise your voice in every way you know how Don't be toes up, you got to show up Ain't no better time to do it but now No need to pledge allegiance to no wanton tribe Rise up, show a beat 
package to the voice inside. And listen well, and it'll tell you not to run and hide. It says, stand up.